Hola chicos, today you are going to learn how to bring your ochos to the next level. I'm Silvia Mezzasoma and this is Idea Tango. I'm sure I don't have to tell you why you might want to improve your ochos. It's one of the first steps you learn in tango and one of those steps you always execute at least once while dancing a song. So let's go straight to the exercises that will massively improve your ochos technique. I'm going to show you the exercises for the leaders first, for the followers after, and then I'm going to uncover the technical secrets to avoid the most common mistakes. For the leaders, four exercises, same movements but different timing. First exercise, imagine that you are leading an ocho forward. So you need to lead the pivot first and then the step. So you stand on your left leg, you dissociate towards the left and then step towards the right. Dissociate towards the right and then step towards the left. And then you can repeat as many times as you want. Dissociation, step, dissociation, step. Second exercise. Imagine that you are now leading ocho backwards. So you still stand on your left leg, but you are now dissociating towards the right and step towards the right. Dissociation towards the left, step towards the left. Repeat as many times as you want. Dissociation, step, dissociation, step. The third exercise is like the first one. So again, ochos forward, but now with a different timing. So instead of dissociating first and then stepping, you are now going to blend the dissociation and the step together. Stand again on the left leg and dissociate towards the left. Then step to the right, but before finishing the step, start already the dissociation towards the right. And then step to the left. You can now repeat as many times as you want. Fourth exercise, like the second one, leading ochos backwards, but with a new timing. So you stand again on your left leg, dissociate towards your right and step towards the right. Before finishing the step, you already dissociate towards the left. And you can repeat as many times as you want. Dissociation, step, dissociation, step. For the followers, also for you, four exercises with same movements, but different timing. First exercise, you are going to execute ochos forward. Stand in front of a wall and on your right leg. Place your hands gently on the wall at a height which is in between your shoulders and your ears. Now you want to press your right hand against the wall, activate the right side and through this pressure rotate your hips. And then you take a step forward with the left. Now you want to press your left hand against the wall and through the pressure rotate the hips. And then you step forward. Now you can repeat as many times as you want. Press, rotate, step. Press, rotate, step. Second exercise. You are now going to execute ochos backwards. So once again, stand in front of the wall and on the right leg. You now press on the left hand to activate your left side and rotate the hips. And then you step backward with the left. Now you press with your right hand to activate and rotate the hips and then step backward. And then you can repeat as many times as you want. Press, rotate, step. Press, pivot, step. The third exercise is like the first one. So again, ochos forward, but now you're going to change the timing. So instead of finishing the step and then activate your hand to pivot, you're going to activate the hand right before finishing the step so that as soon as the step is over, you can immediately pivot. Then once again, in front of the wall on your right leg, activate the right hand against the wall to pivot your hips and then step forward with the left. Right before the step is finished, start already activating the left hand against the wall so that as soon as the step is over, you can immediately pivot. And then you can repeat as many times as you like. Fourth exercise. Again, ochos backwards, but with a new timing. So in front of the wall with the right leg, activate the left hand against the wall to pivot the hips and step backward with the left. Right before the step is over, start already activating the right hand against the wall so that as soon as the step is finished, you can immediately pivot. 
and then you can repeat as many times as you like. I'm going to unveil the proper technique for leaders and followers separately and I'm going to start from the leaders. Leaders, first of all, your embrace. Too often I see dancers, even after years of tango, leading the ochos from the arms rather than from the whole embrace. If your frame is not correct, you cannot take your ochos to the next level. And more complicated moves like turns with the rosques, agukas or lapises will never come. Remember, the ochos, like any other movement, are led by your chest and not by your arms. Therefore, your chest is the motor of the movement, while your arms are the crankshaft that allows the propagation of the movement. As the crankshaft doesn't move if there's no combustion in the motor, in the same way the arms do not move if there's no movement in the chest. As the crankshaft is a solid piece of metal and not a rubber elastic, so should be your arms, a steady prolongation of your chest and not rubber parts. In particular, pay attention to your elbows, they never go behind your shoulders. and they never drop, especially the right one. To help you in keeping a correct frame, you can check my previous video on how to improve the tango connection. I'm going to leave you the link in the description here below. And you can use the three tools to execute the exercises of this video. Now, let's talk about your hips. Easy, they don't move at all. When you dissociate, you want to pivot to your follower on her own axis without pushing or pulling her out of balance. Imagine that in the center of your embrace there is a pole and when you dissociate you don't want to get closer to the pole with your shoulders or arms. Rather, you want to keep your whole embrace at the same distance from the pole at any point in time. Finally, let's talk about the timing. What often happens is that the leader starts leading the pivot before the follower has finished their step, pushing her out of balance. The purpose of the first two exercises is to learn to finish a movement before starting the next one, then to finish the step before starting the dissociation. Once these two movements are processed by your body and brain as two different and separated movements, you can start matching them back again, but with the correct timing, which is the purpose of the exercises 3 and 4. If we separate the side step in four moments, projection, transferring of the weight to the middle step, transferring of the weight to the new standing leg and collection, your chest cannot start moving until you are about to finish moment 3. Therefore, only when you are about to reach the new standing leg, you can start the dissociation, which will last as long as the end of moment 3 and the execution of moment 4. Followers, let's see your technique secrets. Normally, the leader would move together with you when you take the step. However, the first secret is that the wall doesn't move. Do you? In case the leader leads ochos without moving, it's because he's inviting you to step around him rather than parallel to him. But in this case, you cannot step around the wall unless you have the capability of walking through the walls. No, I don't think so. So, if the wall doesn't move and you cannot step around the wall, make sure to step always at the same distance from the wall and to slide your hands along the wall to keep your posture correct at any time. Remember, you always pivot on one leg.
Two very common mistakes at all levels, from beginner till advanced, are to pivot without using the leader's frame and before reaching the axis. Regarding the usage of the leader's frame, what often happens is that as soon as you feel the leader dissociating, you immediately pivot without seeking connection in the brace first. This not only makes your life unnecessarily complicated, but also makes you lose connection with your partner. To execute the exercises correctly, before pivoting, you want to press your hand against the wall. This pressure against the wall activates your shoulder blade muscle, the tango muscle, and creates a connection between your hand and your hip. Through this pressure to the wall, you want to move your hip backward. As soon as your pivot is finished, remember to release the tension and come back to a gentle touch. Now you can take the step. You always activate only one hand at a time during the pivot. And this is the hand on the side of the hip that moves away from the wall. Always remember to release the tension in your hand as soon as the pivot is over. When you execute the archers with your leader, the right hand works exactly as with the wall, but the left hand is now embracing your partner, so the work performed by the left hand is now performed by the inside part of your arm where you have the connection point with your leader's frame. Also remember that the wall doesn't move and you have to push against it. But your leader moves and you don't want to push against him, rather you want to let him move you. So when your leader dissociates to mark the pivot, you first activate the side you need by increasing the tension in the point of connection and then you keep this slightly higher tension and let him move your hip rather than pushing against him. Remember to release the increased tension as soon as the pivot is over. You don't want to do a Greek or Roman wrestling with your partner, so even if you are playing with different tensions in your frame, it's never pushy and never heavy. Regarding the pivot before reaching the axis, what often happens is that you are still in the process of transferring the weight during the step and you already start the pivot. This is the best way to lose your balance. So make sure that you have steadily reached the new axis before you start rotating your hips. However, the leader needs to start dissociating a split second before you are steadily in your axis in order to make a fluent movement. Therefore, instead of starting your pivot as soon as you feel the dissociation, use the first moment of the dissociation to reach your axis and to activate the side you need and only then you can actually pivot. The purpose of the first two exercises is to learn to finish the step before pivoting. Once your body and brain have processed the two movements as two different and separated movements, then you can start merging them together back, but with the correct timing, which is the purpose of the exercises three and four. If we divide the step in four different moments, projection, transfer of the weight to the middle step, transfer of the weight to the new axis and collection, you can activate your side only when you are about to finish moment three and you can start the pivot only when moment three is fully finished. One last tip. When you execute the archers with the leader, you want to keep your upper body as much as possible towards the leader whilst your hips rotate. If you rotate your head to the right and to the left, this doesn't help you in keeping the upper body towards the leader. So, keep your sight to the wall. And when you dance with a partner, keep your sight towards your partner's tango eye, which is more or less here. If you like this video, tell me with a thumb up. 
And if you'd like to stay up to date on all the Fango Technique advices, make sure to register to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button right now. Practice at all and enjoy your technique exercises.